What's up guys and gals? My name is Splattercat and we are here in the Nerd Castle with another episode of Banished. I'm not even sure what episode we're on anymore, they're just kind of like running together. In the previous episode, we had survived a famine, so we were like right on the edge of having a major famine. Everybody's rib cages were sticking out, and we were able to play the xylophone really well on like everybody. I was lining up my peasants and I had like these little sticks of beating, and I was just playing musical instruments on them, but it seemed to like hurt morale, like I noticed they weren't getting their work done quite as quickly as I would have liked. And so I broke off the practice. It was one of those things that I had to give up. I didn't have a choice. We're almost out of room at our cemetery, so that's probably something that we're going to want to jump on pretty shortly. Giving ourselves a new place to store all the bodies from our recently deceased. Our food is doing alright. We're doing amazing on food. So hopefully that'll hold out where it is. We've got a lot of farming occurring over here. We do have people dying, but on the plus side, the people that are dying now are being replaced by educated citizens. So we finally managed to get ahead of that curve. There was always this big problem with educating our citizens in which we find that it takes so long for them to become educated that every time we tried to do it, even if we had about 30 laborers, they would die off too rapidly and we just couldn't get the job done quick enough. Well, this time we got them spitting out the back end, kind of. I mean, I may still have to shut this down. We've only got two laborers left, but it's looking better this time than it ever has before, so we'll keep an eye on it. A very, very suspicious eye, like an eye with one eyebrow raised, an eye with a little swoopy doop above it if you're trying to draw the situation. And then from there, we'll just kind of keep our ear to the ground and hope that this whole situation doesn't collapse on us. Luckily, we have a button that solves that, and it's called the work button. We've got another person who's died right now, Gwendy. Yeah, unfortunately, we have a back end heavy society where everybody's old and very few people are young and being born. Like, look, this is not enough children. For our society. I mean, all in all, we have about 36, but uh, what can you do? Such is the system of life. So let's make our road system for the new part of our town that we're going to be occupying. We're going to start working out around this area. In the previous episode, we put in another forestry lodge. We'd also dropped in another gatherer's hut. A child named Well was born. I hope that he's well. <laughs> oh, that was the easy joke right there. But anyways, bad jokes aside, we wanted to develop something around this region. It looks like we've got somebody else who's educated that's popped out the back end now, and I think what we're going to find is that as more and more of our society is replaced by people who are educated, I think our optimal situation is, well, our, I suppose our optimization is going to grow if I wanted to say that properly. I got kind of hung up on my words right there, much like a coat hanger in a rack. What do I want to do in this episode? Well, I haven't really thought about it at all. We do need a new graveyard. And so I think the first thing I'm going to consider, I don't know where our stone is going. Last I checked, I thought we were full up on stone, but I could be wrong. What did I put their queue up to? Up to 500? Okay, well, maybe they're just kind of going at it kind of slowly. What else can you say about it? We're maxed out on coal, which is really nice. We're not maxed out on iron, but meh, we're, we're staying even. Our tools are doing okay right now. In fact, that's the thing that I'd like to check on first. So before we go anywhere else in this episode... Let's take a look at our inventories and make sure that nothing is dropping off on us. We've got plenty of coats, so wool coats are looking alright. Warm coats are looking okay as well. Steel coats looking pretty good right there. We have lots and lots of firewood. We have lots and lots of other stuff. We're still deforesting at a rate that I don't find to be... Exemplary? I don't find that to be pleasant. We have somebody without... Oh no, I hope that bug doesn't get me. Oh no, that was from the last episode. So there's a bug in the game right now, and it happened to me in my last game that I was playing by myself where all of my guys just stopped where they were. Like, every single one of these citizens, you see how they're sort of milling about right now, each is doing their job? They all just stopped one day. Everybody stopped exactly where they were standing, and they stood there for a year, and all they all starved to death simultaneously. Don't know what that bug is from or how it happened. I'm really hoping it's not infectious and we don't get it in this playthrough, but if we do, it could spell the end of our playthrough. I'll probably try and load a save or something if that happens, but I'm hoping it doesn't because it really is kind of a pain in the ass, and I just don't like dealing with it. Let's start off on the front end. We'll start off on the front end, maybe with like a little 12 by 12 cemetery right there. Just an extra place to throw the bodies so that they're not on the side of the road like in the ditch. I don't know if you guys ever played Evil Genius. I've been playing Evil Genius again through because I've been having kind of a retro gaming spree for me. I've been like, yeah, let's play some old games. And so I've been kind of loading up some of the older games that I haven't played in a while. And Evil Genius is one of the ones that I have been booting up. And the dead bodies that are around, they make people grumpy. People just don't like seeing dead bodies every day. I mean, personally for me, I kind of run this place like a commissar. And so if there's extra space, I hang bodies from it. Because that's what I find really helps me get the job done and kind of motivate everybody else. You know, work to live, live to work. That's how it is. Everybody should know how this whole thing goes down by now. But, unfortunately, people were getting grumpy about it. And there was looking like there was going to be a rebellion at some point. So I stopped. Now, I wanted to get rid of one of these wood choppers down here. You guys had mentioned that that might be an astute way to... Oh, I already did. Okay, so one of the wood choppers is gone. 
That's perfectly fine and doodly dandy. So now that the wood chopper is done down there, she should starve out pretty soon, which is really disappointing because, oh, she's 54. She's probably going to die soon anyways. Ah, well, what can you do with your aged members of your society? We're obviously not using a lot of these to our maximum potential. I would like to add a few more workers to my farm, but we're going to have to wait until we have a lot more laborers ready to go. So I'm going to hold off on that right now. On this side, they are building more houses, so that's good. I was sort of hoping in my heart of hearts that eventually we would find ourselves with some nomads coming along pretty soon, but that doesn't appear to be the case. We have no nomads waiting for us. A child named Isidore. Perhaps that is Isidore Jr. He's named after his illustrious father who wooed all of the women in the town and had lots of babies. I saw an article about that where it was like a guy from Norway who had, basically he hooked up with like six different women at a bachelor party and then nine months later in the paper he found out that he had like, well, he got caught. He didn't find out. He knew, but he had a bunch of bastards basically that all got caught simultaneously because the notification announcement like in newspapers. In local newspapers they put up pictures when babies are born and when people die. And so there were six pictures all of which had him and like a different woman and a different child in each one. It was pretty, it was funny because it's not me. I'll say that's why it was funny is because it's not my problem. Samaranda has died and was replaced by Ellie. My lab partner last semester was named Ellie in my physics class. What do I want to do over here? So we should probably get some projects underway on this side. We have enough logs because I cut them down to 900, literally. That Well, I wasn't trying to be punny right there intentionally. I mean, it was an accidental pun. It was one of those spray and pray puns. But I was trying to cut down my log numbers to 900, and so there it is. I could probably also get away with a hunter's lodge down in here, but we don't have the laborers to work in it just yet. So once we start getting ourselves some more laborers and our edumacation rounds itself out, we should be all right. For now, everything's looking fairly peaceable, though. There's nothing... This game is kind of... I don't remember who it was, but there was a poet once who said... Or it wasn't a poet, it was a writer, perhaps, who said that... Warfare was... Like, days and days of boredom, punctuated by seconds of fear and terror, or something like that. That's basically how Banish works as well. It's days and days of boredom, punctuated by, like, crazy things happening and everybody dying all at once. So I can't really guarantee that anything interesting is going to happen in any given episode. In this one, we seem to have gotten in front of all of our problems for now, and we're just waiting for our population to get done maturing. Hopefully that happens. I mean, I would love to see some of these people just go bing, 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 bing and pop out. There's one right there. So we've got... Jail has become an adult, is now working as a laborer. That's good. I'd like to have a lot more labor on hand, but... The gods of labor don't seem to be helping me out to that extent. All of these fields are looking pretty goddamn terrible. Not getting the yields that I would like out of all of them. The little fields definitely seem to be better than the bigger fields. I will say that about the problem. Well, in a situation such as this, we've got another death. So Billison has died and Wandus has finally died of starvation. Off in this corner. Hopefully nobody tries to go get that stuff. I don't know why there's a bunch of meat and food stuck in behind that building, but that appears they went on a quest for steak, and if I could think of any more noble way to die on the quest for steak, there's not a whole lot of more manly ways to die, but that was a female right there, so she decided she wanted to be kind of the Ron Swanson of women, and go out, and we've got a merchant that's now arrived. Damn. Well, I would love to add more farm workers, but not enough laborers. We seem to have hit a bottleneck of some sort. I could cancel my education, but like I said, hell or high water, we're sticking this one out. If only somebody would come around and sell us new villagers, that would be the optimal situation. Got 40 wood coats over here that we can sell for any number of random pieces of equipment or goods. We've got cherries. I don't think cherry trees are going to be very useful right now, although I do love cherries. Some of my fondest memories from my childhood are sitting on the roof of a shed. Just sitting there, there was a cherry tree next to the shed, and you would just sit on the roof and eat cherries and just spit them off the roof all day. Just killing time like kids get to do. I wish I had time to kill like that now, but I spend all my time gaming anymore. Whether or not I'm cutting episodes for you guys or just gaming on my own, it seems to be where all of my time flies off to. It definitely is drinking the Red Bull at this given time, and my time has wings. A little bit of building going on over here. I can't allocate any builders either. Another one of those big letdowns. I could reallocate some of my herdsmen, because I've heard that herdsmen work perfectly fine with just one guy running around. What is he producing on a yearly basis? Yeah, a thousand mutton. That's really, really nice. I'm going to assume that the output is about the same down here. Indeed it is. The output is a little bit lower down here, but he's got a lot farther to go to a stockpile, so I think that's probably where he's getting hit up. Arid has replaced Analyset as a woodcutter. 
or a stone cutter. I got my materials mixed up. I can't tell you the difference between stone and wood, and I'm a geologist. How embarrassing is that? I'm gonna raise the food stockpiles up because it looks like we're about to hit our cap. Put that up as 13,000 for right now. One of our children has gone and become a student. I do like having this open because it does give me something that I can talk to you guys about while we're running around and doing our thing. These extra houses should help us in a number of ways. I'm thinking that maybe putting in a well over here is going to be a good idea too. The wells seem to be next to useless though. So I'm always a little bit apprehensive. I'm filled with trepidity whenever I decide to put down wells because they don't seem to work no matter... Well, they don't seem to work well, I guess. They never seem to work quite the way you want them to. You put them down and I've never seen a well put out of fire yet in any of my personal playthroughs. No matter how many I have, it just doesn't seem to work. I've tried having loads and loads of laborers around, that doesn't work. And that seems to be the strategy that they intend through the game's design. Still haven't seen it though. Let's speed the game on up to 10 times because nothing else good is happening right now. And if nothing else good is happening, we should just fly by the seat of our pants. Which I never understood where that saying came from. Maybe it's because flying by the seat of your pants. It might be a polite way by saying just like flying by your ass, basically. That kind of implying that you're thinking with your ass. Kind of having your head up your ass or so forth. I don't know. Maybe that's where it came from. I couldn't tell you. Could not tell you because I've never researched it. On this side of our civilization, we should probably put in a... Well, everybody's happy. I don't think we have a need for a church or anything right now. I had a church in one of my other societies, and it was nice to have, but it kind of just raises up your happiness as you have it. And beyond that, it doesn't seem to have a whole lot of uses. I would like to see it have different uses. Maybe in the future, by some little patches or something, but... Right now, the building doesn't appear to have a whole lot of uses. Lots of deaths coming down right now, but our laborers are finally circulating their way through our usage. So that's good. That's very, very nice. I'm happy to see... Oh, actually, we are low on students right now. Oddly enough, I was hoping that we wouldn't have any weird systems where we didn't have enough people to replace, but these children must be very, very young right now and not able to go to school yet. But anyways, with six laborers, that does give me a little bit of extra space. We can't get any building projects done yet, unfortunately. I suppose what we could think about, we do have a boarding house, correct? Yeah, I thought we had a boarding house over here. So there's a number of things that I wanted to have so that nomads would show up, but they don't look like they're going to be agreeable with regards to that assertion. I think we should probably go with a few more houses. And I think what I'd like to do, well, we'll hold off on that for right now. I think this is going to be like an observational episode. Where I just kind of think about the things that I want and... You know how it goes. We've got 40 stone. Why not? Drop in a couple more houses. I take it back. We'll drop in two right there. And that's going to get rid of 80, so we'll be down to 88 or 86 or... Actually, no. The stone just dropped off really heavily. I don't know where all the stone is going, but they might be gathering it for this job right here. Yeah. Let's throw in a couple of more builders just to make this go quicker. I think we've got enough space to do so right now. We do have people dying, but finally we're out the back end of the tunnel. We just barely made it, which is always nice to know. And once these workers are all done with all of their various tasks, I'd like to get ahead of our housing boom right now. We've got a little bit of a Californian situation going on. I don't know, a few years ago, California had a massive housing boom, and then it also collapsed, and then now you see a lot of homeless people. And it's, it's weird, because it's it definitely kind of, you see the disease happen, and then you see the symptoms of the disease afterwards. So basically we had a housing boom where everybody wanted to move into California between like 2000 and 2005, 2006. Housing market collapsed, and all of those loans that have given to people. It was actually right around the time that Fran, like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac did their whole bailout thing. And all those loans got kind of defaulted on, and so I think everybody just kind of collapsed. And now you just see homeless people everywhere here nowadays. I don't remember seeing homeless people at all when I was growing up, and now they're just tons into like every street corner it almost seems like there's people fighting over street corners nowadays crazy crazy stuff a sad indicator of the times then again I suppose well I don't know I don't know I don't have solutions or any kind of guess how to fix those sort of things so I tend to stay away from them I'm one of those obnoxious people that just like points at a problem and then never, like never tells you how to fix it we could start brewing beer but we don't have any wheat seeds with that 15 right there we could reallocate. Let's have a look. Let me pause up or at least slow the game down a little bit right now. Go up to our stockpile and we'll take a look at our inventory. And wool coats we have 174 of. I think we could potentially get away with stocking a lot. And I don't mean potentially. I mean we could absolutely get away with this. Stocking a lot more wool coats. So like maybe 120. 
And so that'll give us about 1,800 bargaining power for when somebody else comes down the pipe. I also don't know what wool is worth, so we may think about doing wool, too. Well, we'll see. We have a lot of wool, from what I understand. With those two sheep fields, we're doing fairly well. All the building is now done. Let's go ahead and drop everybody back into our labor pool. And I think this is going to be the time that I'm going to put in three more farmers. Oop, that's not the button I need. I need this button. So we'll go three more right there. Oh, are we maxed out? Well, that doesn't make much sense then. We'll give it a second. Sometimes they get the question mark, and then they find themselves a job right after. And so we'll give it an hour or two. Not literally, but like a short hour in game. No, it looks like that's actually the maximum allocated amount of people that we can have. So I'll drop it back down. If there's nothing I can do about it, there's no point wasting people on it. Oh, there are still building jobs left. Maybe I should keep them on that then. I guess I'm just being inefficient. Maybe they're running too far to stockpiles. Maybe the fields are too big. I don't function at an optimal level. That's just me. I don't, like, function at the apogee of strategy. That is the nerd castle. We kind of just, like, herp and derp our way through things, and then we trip over ourselves. And I'm that guy that's, like, in the corner while everybody else is working hard on homework, like, scratching my head and being like, I don't know. I don't know. Seems kind of difficult. Seems like the sort of thing that we can leave to professionals. Just, like, not really sure if I should take the first step or not. God, I had to redo. I don't know if you guys know what GIS is. But I have to work with GIS, and that is the worst design, most obnoxious program I've ever seen in my life. It lacks functionality such as, like, cut and paste. You have to do, like, a ridiculous amount of work just to cut and paste in GIS. What GIS is, is it's kind of like a 3D rendering software for, like, maps. We use it in geology. It's called ArcGIS. And it is the worst program that is ever designed. And to add insult to injury, a copy of it costs, like, $25,000. And so they get all this money. I've got to assume that they only sell, like, one license a year at that cost. Because they never update it. It never works any better. It's just as terrible now as it was in the 90s. They just made it look nicer. Like, it's basically still terrible, but it looks nicer now. It's got, like, a GUI. It's rocking a GUI now. And it's just... Why? Why? So we're all out of space at that storage barn. A little bit weird. Wasn't expecting that, so we may want to put in a secondary one, or maybe a market over here, like a secondary market? I don't know. Let's... What do we have down in this spot? Are there any deer down here? I don't see any deer running around. I may use this opportunity to plan out a strategy with you. Maybe put another Forester's Lodge down here, but not use it yet. I'm not sure. We do need to de-stone all of this. So while we've got laborers, I might consider doing that. So let's go through and we'll de-stone this region. So let's grab all the stone out of here that we can. We'll drop it off in a stockpile somewhere. Just throw it in a pile for later. We may have to bolster our iron usage as well in the future. We do have some nice looking hills right here that we could put a new mine into. And maybe outrun the boomerang there. But I don't know. We're officially maxed out on food, so we don't even need to do anything on that end. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. And as you can see, you're probably wondering where all these workers come from. What they have like administered in the game is that if you have all of your farmers are done, anybody who's not actively working on anything defaults to being a laborer. So that's what all these guys are doing out here. They're being labor. I'm also going to grab all the iron while it's out here. We've got an entire winter to do this. We've got so much food that it's absolutely crazy. So we may as well get the work done while it's available. Who knows if the like in the future we're even going to be able to do anything about this. It could come a time very shortly that we'll have less food and we'll have a lot of work to do. And at that point I'll feel very, very guilty for not getting the work done now. So we're going to try and be the... Was it the grasshopper? I don't know. The grasshopper always kind of seemed like a douchebag to me. I was like, F you grasshopper. You're an asshole. Making everybody else look bad. All we wanted to do was have some fun and party, but no. You're that guy that has to stay and keep working on the lab, even though the rest of us are like 60% done. You've got to get it done like 10 days early so that the rest of us feel bad when the teacher asks, just out of curiosity, who's worked on this at all? And you'd be like, ugh. And you're that guy. I was that guy this morning. The teacher was like, it's one of my last classes in my senior year. And the teacher goes, so out of curiosity, how many of you guys haven't even touched this project yet? And nobody raised their hand but me. And I was like, well, damn. Now I feel dreadfully alone. It's okay. It'll take me like five minutes. It's not even a big deal. I may be overestimating myself there. I better be fine, though. I gotta find, like, a giant map of Calusa County because I screwed up. I was trying to do a giant map of Solano County. I was trying to do a, geo like, geologic map work 
and unfortunately I chose the wrong mapping area because I got my scale wrong. And all the things you see me do wrong here on the Nerd Castle, I do wrong in real life too. Like I overlook things and I screw up simple stuff left and right. It's, you know, it's the curse. It's the curse. We've got squash seeds, we've also got cabbage seeds. I don't really want either of those, so we're gonna dismiss him. We've got lots of people dying of old age now. Is anybody being replaced? Out of curiosity? Ew, nobody's being- so all these children are very, very young. This could kind of backfire on me right now. Hopefully they mature quick. I feel like a br I, I was gonna say, I feel like a bent record here, but no, I feel like a, a broken record. If anybody even uses those anymore. I noticed at Best Buy and stuff, they're selling vinyl again, which is kind of an interesting phenomenon. Some people insist on the way it sounds. They like the fidelity or the lack of fidelity. I prefer- I think CDs are just about right for me. But that's because I grew up during that age. I do agree that MP3s at times can sound too good. And everything is over-processed nowadays, too. I actually kind of liked how in the- Oh my god. Nomads have arrived. How many nomads? 27 nomads, dear god. Yeah, sure? 27 seems like it would have the potential to completely wreck my society if I do this wrong. Let's do it. Let's mix and match here. Oh, some of them are going to be children. Okay. So that's not nearly as scary. However, we do have more mouths to feed now. So let's take a look at our... Let's see how bad the housing situation is going to be. And it's probably going to be pretty bad. So now that we've got a lot of laborers... Let's start squeezing some houses into every orifice. It looks alright right there. Can I fit anything else down in here? I don't think I can. I think I'm about out of space over here. I can get one in right there. Alright. Oh, I can fit a bunch in right here, so let's do that. Especially since they've got a market right across the street. Why not? You might as well. And we've got another space right there. We'll just leave him unattached to the road. And so we've got a lot of labor to be done. Let's go ahead and we'll put in eight builders and we'll leave ten laborers for now. Because these houses, it's late spring. Oh, that's fine then. I was worried that it was going to be like late fall right now. And we were going to run into a spot where nobody has a house. So we're going to get people going on building themselves some homes. And this should go reasonably quickly. We've got a lot of people working on it. So maybe even go a little bit more balls to the wall here. I don't know why the wall wants our balls. The wall's feeling a little bit promiscuous at the moment, I guess. It's a wall filled with promiscuity. But for whatever reason, it feels like having a taste of the Kajonis, and so we will oblige. We will obligue. You can also drop a few more houses right there, maybe? And we will also have a birth explosion, so we want to... Let's have a little look here. Well, we'll watch our food. We've got a little bit of space. We've got enough leeway with food to where it's going to take us at least two years to bleed out. So I'm going to watch food from here on out to try and make sure that nothing bad happens there. So yeah, all these houses are still looking pretty stacked with individuals. Kind of cool though. I like the fact that we got more nomads. That's fun. So let's start thinking about our next development plan. I'm going to build out this way towards this wall. And we're going to turn this into kind of an industrial area. We're going to put a lot of mines and things in here right here to help out with some of the stuff we're going to need later on down the line. Put in another field right here, and then everything past this road is going to be just normal development. But up this way, we'll have a few more farms. This may wrap around somehow. Make it kind of one of those goggle-type situations. Like in the NBA for a while, everybody was wearing those wraparound goggles. That's basically what this is going to be, but with roads. So let's start planning ourselves out a bit. I want to put in a road right here. We'll just kind of squeeze things in where they fit. Put another road in right there. Maybe like a little farmstead on each side. Yeah, we're looking okay. Maybe another storage barn even might be an astute idea until we can get another market up. There's going to be another market like right here, maybe. And we'll use that to circulate goods a little bit better. The farm yield seems to be really, really good this year. They're doing... Well, the orchards are doing poorly, but everything else is looking nice, so that's fine. How are our forests doing? Forests looking okay. We're obviously going to need a bit more wood at this stage in the game. Oh, we've got an infestation. Which one is... Okay, so we've got an infestation over here and it could potentially jump to our other squash fields which would give us a multi-year problem and could result in a famine. So what we're gonna do now is we'll harvest this and then we'll switch it to pumpkin. 
And we have to just really put our hands together and scream at the skies, please don't let this transfer. Now, it's not too far, but buggies do fly, so bugs can make some distance. You ever see that bee that's just holding onto the side of your car, just like, yeah! And you wonder if he just decided to get out of town. He just had, like, an argument with the queen. He just had to go somewhere else. He couldn't take it anymore. He had to leave. We just had a bunch of people die. Let me reallocate some of these guys because we have our maximum builders out of the way. Graveyard's all full up. I do wish that the graveyard did something too. If you look at like black and white and games like that, the graveyard feeds you. People go there and they feel numinous. They just feel happy. They feel transcendent when they go to the graveyard. I used to dig graveyards for a while. I would go to graveyards and just kind of look at things. I enjoy finding like historical things though. An outbreak of influenza has also occurred, so the nomads appear to have brought all kinds of bugs with them. I mean, I don't want to discriminate based on the fact that, you know, they're new to town, but it seems like they brought a couple of hitchhikers with them, whether it's like little weevils, evil weevils that are ready to eat our food, or whether it was disease, they seem to have brought something with them, but we're going to let them slide for now. I would almost consider bulldozing this field, too. There we go, so that'll save us. And then what we'll do is we'll... I don't know if that stays right there. Kind of one of those questions that I've never asked. I'm not aware of if that's how it works. Strangely enough. Everybody should be harvesting now. And let's drop... Let me see if I can replace the field right there. An interesting idea. Or maybe put it in an orchard. The orchards haven't been working quite so well lately, though. It's also worth noting that we may want to do another pasture. Like, these pastures are doing really well by us. But anyways, let's keep ourselves in the A-game here. Let's make sure that we're not getting ahead of ourselves. In fact, it may be time to break off the episode, but let me lower the amount of farmers I have for now. So that we don't have people walking around being useless, like staring at the sky and breathing heavily. I don't see anything else jumping up saying that there's more epidemics breaking out or B there's no more bug transfer going on so I think we beat that one right there nothing bad's gonna happen for now and I want to watch how our harvest is gonna go too because our harvest looks like it's hitting a brick wall so if this doesn't get at least up to 13,000 before the end of the year the thing we're gonna have to consider is that we're sitting right on the edge of the precipice basically we're breaking even which means within the next year we're gonna be running low on food we're gonna play be playing the ribcage xylophone again a lot of the crops are also dying off so let's replace the field that we had we'll just go like a little oh I don't know do like a 9 by 9 right there Couple more people dying. I don't know which Isador that was, but he's replaced by Gastoni. Which is kind of funny because Gastoni works in the stone mine, so he's kind of got like his name. Like the thing he does is in his name, which is humorous. At least for a second. We'll allocate some more farmer so that that works out. And we'll get some pumpkin from here. Firewood's going to be a little bit more difficult, so we do want to spread that production around a tad. I could put in another forester up here. But, let's go right here. So with this Forester, I'd like him to be right here. That's a really, really good kill zone with regards to his skills. So maybe we'll, that'll give me a bit more room to build if I put it further back. So we'll put it right there. And while that's getting done, we'll also think about, we have how many laborers? we got 12 laborers left, so we don't have a whole lot of laborers to play around. A child named Colin was born. Dear God. And that's spelled like colon the body part. So I can only imagine he probably came out of his mama just spewing refuse everywhere. And there's like, you know what, his name's Colin. Forget this. We're naming him after what he does. We're going with that old Native American tactic of just like, eh, just name him what he does. It'll be fine. God. So anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episode. I think I'm going to break it off right here. My name is Splattercat. Take care out there, everybody. And I'll see you in our next episode of Banished. Farewell from Helgar's Hole.